This is Comic Geek Speak, special House of M edition. And welcome to Comic Geek Speak. I'm Brian Deemer. I'm Shane Kelly. I'm Matt. I'm Jamie D. I'm Kevin Boyer. I'm Peter Rios. We are sexy bitches, yeah! <laughs> All right. You asked for it. We're giving it to you. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> it's a spoiler-filled episode dedicated just to House of M. We all did our homework. We all read the eight issues. Most of us read Decimation, or all of us? How, how many have read Decimation? I read it. I read the first issue. I yeah, I read it. I have not yet. Most of us have read uh, some of the tie-ins, um, so we are all prepared. Yeah. So take that, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it wasn't going to happen. Surprise! <laughs> Never say never. Yep. And not yeah. because it was on the board. We did this no, well we before actually, that. Yeah, we actually to do that. Before. And then that same week, that's when it was posted on the board about how about a House M special. And I was like, we already got that in the can. That's so cool. who's going to start? Okay. Who wants to start? Where do we want to start? We want to start as just the story, or why don't we just start as the story itself? Not, not as an event or anything like that, just the eight issues as a story what we thought of it. Uh, I'll start. Go right ahead. I was pleasantly surprised, and I enjoyed every bit of it. I kind of feel the same way. I mean, I, I, I realized that, to me, it could have been a little shorter. Like, it didn't have to be eight issues, but I didn't mind that it was eight issues. Um, yeah, And especially at the end. At you know, it's, it, it's what I expected from a Bendis story. There's always build-up, and sometimes there's some points where it seems a little slow or flat, but it, there's always a payoff. There's always a payoff, and those last two issues was one hell of a payoff. And see, I, you know, I had heard so many comments about how it was too long and blah 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 blah. So as I was reading it, I kept expecting to get to the part that I didn't need to read, and none of it felt like that to me. It felt like he he went into a little bit of detail on a few different stories to set the mood to put you into that situation so that you knew why you were there and you, know, you just got into that world. And in the beginning. I was disappointed, like by issue two, I was thinking, now, is this going to be stupid? Because I hate, oh, excuse me, I hate, um, like, other world stories, you know, where, oh, it's out of continuity, and then you come back, and then, oh, it wasn't that nice, none of it meant anything. And then once you realized that it was the Scarlet Witch controlling reality, but it really was actually happening... Right. Then I went, oh, that's an interesting way to do it. And then when they brought the reality back and some people remembered reality and all that stuff, then I went, okay, I like this now. Because I was worried. Issue one I thought was great, and then issue two, halfway yeah. through, I'm thinking, oh, what the hell are they doing? This is stupid. I don't want um, that Age of Apocalypse BS. I want a real story. And then I realized it was a real story. So, And I don't mind having alternate universes or anything. To me, I didn't, I didn't get the feeling it was an alternate universe. You know what I mean? It, it's not like Age of Apocalypse, or it's not like something of that nature. To me, I felt what was happening was justifiable, and especially when you find out later on what the whole story behind it all um, and well, the impact it had. Let's talk about that, because it is like Age of Apocalypse. I, I don't see how it's not. So, so explain to me how you see it's not like Age... Not, and let's talk... You know, those of you who don't know Age of Apocalypse, something happened, a cataclysmic event happened where some all-powerful mutant uh, killed Charles Xavier, changed time back in, you know, back in, in when he was in Israel, I think it was. Yeah. Created this alternate universe. There was a leftover, meaning Bishop, who remembered the past or what the correct universe was. Got, got a band of X-Men together to change it. They changed it. And although people may not have remembered the Age of Apocalypse, there were events from, or characters from Age of Apocalypse who came into Marvel, and everything jumped ahead. They didn't really say, but it definitely felt like when they restored the books that, that it felt like time had passed. Um, so, now since then, we treat it like an alternate universe because we've since dipped into Age of Apocalypse. But at the time, none of the X-Books were going. It was all Age of Apocalypse. So now, how does that differ from Because I thought it was all just... See, I only read the first trade, and in the first trade, it's all just 
this is just pretend. Let's just stop tell, telling, telling regular X-Men stories for a couple months, and let's just tell this fake X-Men story that has nothing to do with anything, and then when we're done telling this, we'll go back to the regular X-Books. Right. See, the, that's my difference of it. Reading House of M and reading how it's laid out, to me, is like there was not a point where it's like, okay, everything stopped being the way it is, and now here's this total alternate reality, and now... It's switching back, you know, and everything's the same afterwards, or, or mostly everything's the same. To me, it's kind of like I'm reading everything and realizing now that this goes back beyond Avengers Chaos and Disassembled, and there's things happening from before that that we weren't even aware that this was taking place. You know, yeah. so, so to me, it's kind of a natural flow to it. But Age of Apocalypse did the same thing. I mean, Charles Xavier being a young man with Magneto in Israel, if that's correct. It's the same thing. It, it's going back that far in history, changing things forward. The only difference is it's not quite as drastic or uh, gothic of a change as Age of Apocalypse, Apocalypse was. Well, for me, with Age of Apocalypse, it was just a matter of they went so far out of their way to make everything so weird and and way different than this was, where uh, as... You know, with the House of M, it was everybody was still kind of there, but they were in different roles. There were still, um, you know, Some Peter Parker was there, others. and yeah. you know, and, and other people were there. They may not have been Spider Man or so and so, or you know, Captain America was an old man instead of being the young man, and things had changed. But to me, I can see there wasn't quite as drastic a change between I guess Age of Apocalypse. My, my and, whole point is that. In, in House of M, nothing actually changed. It was just their perception of how it changed because the Scarlet Witch was tweaking with their minds to make them think that things had changed. Well, after – that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't know when this all started. I mean, to me, it's like I don't get an impression that there was a definite point of beginning where they started messing around with reality, you know, where Petro started trying to change things or keep things in a certain way. You know, I, I don't see any definite point in that. So you don't know how long this is. Been oh, going I just on. took it as when the, when the world flashed white. That's when things changed. And then to me, it's like now some people woke up from the dream and some people didn't. And then the world flashed white again. and Everything was back to normal. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. hard. I mean, I took it at surface value there. But I mean, you know, it, what happened was where it really took the jump is after you know Avengers disassembled and and that is where it, everything got all kind of flippy. You know, and that's where you started to change the actual reality of the characters that are involved in it. You know, so before you don't. But in the new reality, it retconned everything backward to who knows how far back. But the only wasn't... difference is Age of Apocalypse, you know that it was when Charles Xavier was killed. Now, m- m- okay, and then my question is, did it, I mean, I didn't think that anything actually happened. I thought these people were just all dreaming that this was the perfect world. And basically then they woke up and then they all... Oh, so that was my question normal. because I didn't get any of that out of this. Because if that had happened then when it flashed back to white then they all would have been standing right there when they opened the door right. to go into her room when it flashed white the first time right and, but they didn't they all they woke up all... in avengers avengers tower uh all different places they were back where they were supposed to be and that's why i thought this was no, a no, world like i guess like to me i guess time passed and so they were they moving slept around. back to the no, but they they, and they weren't really sleeping. But I mean, did she really have the power to to physically change the the surface of the earth and the buildings in Genosha and all that stuff? To, like I think that's yes. what we're that's supposed it. That's to what think. It is. Absolutely, she yeah. was that powerful. Yeah, that's why they were all scared of her. Right. See, that's what I'm saying. But then, okay, but so then it was only but. It, it was still different from Age of Apocalypse in that it was only like a week that things were different and then everything was back to normal. Oh, yeah, yeah, in their time. But from an outside point of view, it's still the same as far as an alternate changing reality that retconned backwards. Just with Age of Apocalypse, you don't know where it changed to have this new skewed timeline. You just know the few days that they were aware of it from the time that it changed for them. Yeah. Like, like well, you have no what idea he, how Yeah, because what he's saying is, like, Captain America didn't stay Captain America. Right. There was no Avengers formation. There was no X-Men Cause formation. Because it was all supposed to be what made people happy. Right, but it, but that meant that you still had to change. That was your perception, event. too. She changed their memories. Yeah. Right. Time changed, say, on Monday. She couldn't just change their memories, though. And everybody lived their life though. by Monday, and then she changed the entire Earth and changed people's memories. Because when people were snapping out of it, they're like, wait a minute. This isn't what the Earth is really like. And then they, they go and they get her whatever, and then boom, okay, by Friday now, 
everything changes back. And now people are remembering this one week where they had different memories of the world. And it's like, whoa, that's screwy. But, but Captain no, America Peter, was an old man. Though. Peter so had... And that one's, that's the thing that makes me confused. Gwen Stacy back. Why is it confusing? Well, because Gwen Stacy didn't Gwen die. Gwen Stacy was there. Right. Their Captain kid was America there. Change reality. So no, she, because, but then Emma was changing their memory to go for a walk, go play. She was telling Gwen, Gwen's okay. Uncle Ben, Aunt May, and Rick, their son, to go play. She was physically putting it in their head, right. go but play. But then when, when the Scarlet Witch put everything back to normal, then they That's were gone. dead again. Right. right, that just realigned everything back to the way it was. Right, but it was all, the Earth was only screwed up for like a couple days. In their heads, it in was their, forever. Yeah, in their, but in reality, it was only a few days. How could it be anything else? It doesn't. It wouldn't make any sense. That's why I almost wish they had, he, they had had enough balls to just say, "Okay, House of M happens." Boom! Every one of the books becomes a House of M book, no matter where you are, no matter what it is. You are now in the world of House of M. Well, that's what they should have done. And then, you know, however many issues, if, even if they want to go a full year of this, then it would at least you know give you enough time. To to explore things that you know they were trying to explore with four issue miniseries and eight issue miniseries, the Hulk, which was just ridiculous. I read the Hulks and I couldn't make heads or tails of them really, um, and not enough time to really explain how the Hulk got there, what what he was fighting against, who he was fighting against, so on and so forth. But uh, you know, you were saying it didn't only about a week. In reality, that, that this happened, I would have liked to have seen just a little bit longer. And if they want to make an earth-shattering change, then make an earth-shattering change. It, for me, it was way too long. It was at least three to four issues too long. Uh, for three to four issues too long for three sentence, three-word sentence that could have been put in the you know, issue one or two. It does. I mean, it it did what it was supposed to do. It's got me, got my interest peaked. So I want to kind of see what one ninety eight. Uh, is going to be. I, I already put that on my list for the DC uh, for my you know my comic order list. So I am curious to find out what's going to go on. So I guess you know I'm the idiot for paying. It did its, it did its job. Yeah, for right. paying 2.95 an issue, and it, it got me hooked enough to see it. But I just wish you know they either had enough balls to do everything, and you know just say we're going to try this experiment and everything changes, or you know, just make it a lot shorter than they did. But why do you say you call yourself an idiot for buying it? I mean, if you, if it made an impression on you, and you're now intrigued to buying something you weren't going to buy before, and because be, for because I spent way too much money on something that I thought I could have gotten the same enjoyment out of only spending, you know, instead of spending what was it eight times, eight times twenty four at twenty four dollars, where I could have spent twelve dollars and gotten the same enjoyment. That I got, he could have told a. But do you really think you get story. the same enjoyment because yes. there's elements yes. of the story yeah, that are in there, there that you wouldn't have gotten? Then. There wasn't anything I, I missed because no, up until what issues, could you cut out? up until issue seven, I thought this was a very lame miniseries. I really did. Well, I what thought, would you? How could you? I don't understand what you'd you. You could out. compact and and tell it. You can tell it quicker. There's a lot of ways you could tell it quicker. I can't. I really didn't prepare to. For this question, well, damn it, I want to know. <laughs> but but I'm just saying, for me, you just could have told it a lot faster. And I'll be honest with you, talking to people because I have I was talking to people at the store about this. To a one, they all said it took too long. It was they oh, didn't see, need I, eight issues. I, I, it I could have been told in four issues. And and I agree with that. And I also agree that it, since it's you know up at the top above House of M, it says Astonishing X Men and Avengers. There's nothing that says this couldn't have happened in Astonishing X Men and Avengers books. You well, didn't I need was going to say an that. overall miniseries. I was going to say that my only thought about it is that while I thought it was a very enjoyable eight issues, and I wouldn't change a thing, I don't think it needed to be a miniseries huge event. I think it could have just happened in New Avengers and X Men because it was only a week's worth of time that was changed. It might have ramifications down the line in everybody's head because now they're like, what was real and what wasn't? My, I, I'm pissed. You know, like Peter Parker's all pissed because Uncle Ben was alive and he's crying and he doesn't want that. Okay, that's that's a good storyline. But it could have just been in Avengers and, and x Well, yeah, because then you would have had the interruption and you wouldn't have had all these other, like, you wouldn't have Spider-Man the other and all the stuff that's going on in New Avengers that you don't really know where this fits. In, but, and I think it would have been a more pleasant surprise continuity. Had, I think we all would have been sitting around saying, I think everyone would have agreed that it was an awesome storyline if it was just a surprise. Like, all of a sudden, and you get an issue of X-Men, and they go, oh, this is cool. 
Oh, continue to New Avengers. Oh, I'll have to check that out. Yes. Oh, and then you go back. Oh, continue to X-Men. Oh, oh, and you get you read these eight issues and you go, wow, oh, that was pretty cool. I think that would have been a better and way to go. And then all of it. a sudden, oh, most of the mutants in the world would be dead and you'd go, whoa, those are important issues. Wow, that was cool. We, Oh, man. And and instead of everyone hating it because it was two issues too long or whatever, they'd, they'd actually think it was cool. I don't know. That's... That's the only thing that I think Marvel screwed the pooch on. I have to say, I don't sound like I'm orgasming as much when I say, oh, I have to cross over to another book. Oh, another <laughs> book. Oh. <laughs> I I agree with Jamie that I think it was too long. Three, four issues too long. I read it and I enjoyed it. I would have liked to have seen it like we just talked about in Astonishing and New Avengers back and forth. Um, I am curious. I'm glad that they pared down the mutants down to 198. I think that's very interesting. And I am going to follow it. But again, I borrowed this from Jamie, so I didn't pay for it. But I do think it was too long. Do we all owe you like 50 cents, yeah, Jamie, yeah, for sharing Jamie 50 cents. <laughs> I want all my money back. Everybody who loved we, it, we each buy your money. Well, I, I, I am going to. So I don't owe you shit. I am going to get. <laughs> I am going to get 198. I am going to yeah, follow X Men a little bit more. Eight. All right, thank you very much. I have issue eight coming in my TCBS mm-hmm. box. The only way that I can say for myself, speaking for myself, that I thought it could have been shorter is the build up of. When they were gathering together and, you know, building up to that issue seven where the big battle was and stuff, I think that could have been, like, maybe two issues shorter. Like, I think this could have been six issues and still had the same quality level and stuff. I don't say three or four. I think that's too much. Um, so well, I think – And see, and I'm, to, to piggyback this, um, my thing with it, those those middle issues where you're, you're going to each character, Captain America, Spider-Man, uh, whoever else it was, to, to wake them up, quote-unquote – um, it didn't have impact for me because I you had to read those miniseries. You had to read Captain America's story. You had to read po- Spider Man's miniseries because you know they they did this whole thing where they woke him up and he had that two page spread of all his memories coming back. But I didn't know what he was waking up from because I didn't read those miniseries. So I didn't know that he was a wrestling star. They don't even basically you show. No. Well, I, somehow I knew that, and I didn't read it. You know where – see, and this actually – this is one of my biggest, biggest complaints about this issue, uh, number three. When you read the previews pages for number three, you found out these things, that he was a wrestling star, that his son's name was Richie, that Hell's Kitchen was run by all these people, and that there was a human resistance movement. But in one and two, none of those things were, were talked about or mentioned. It only was until you read issue three that you found out all these things. And when I and I was like, because I read the previous page, you know, because that's the previous page, because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Peter Parker's son is Richie. Really, I didn't know that. Peter was a wrestling star. Oh, I didn't know that either. Uh, there's a there's a human resistance movement with Iron Fist and Misty Knight. Ah, uh, that's not in one and two. Well, so does it have to be if they give it to you on this preview page? Well, why would they do that though? Why would they make such an important? Well, then it'd be a follow issue facts. miniseries, but and see, then Jamie'd really be pissed. But see, that's but my see, point. Now, you had the... to read the. Spider-Man to get. No, you don't. See, you I just read this page. But here's the thing nah. about about this is this is a mini series that and and it's going to sound like we're I'm going to I'm going to bash Marvel for it. It's going to sound like I'm I'm downing it when I I am interested and I am going to pick up what comes next. However, with Infinite Crisis, it is a self-contained story. You really don't have to read the the extraneous subterfuge that comes out. This you I feel like you have to. You absolutely have to read all the other things to get the complete story, whereas with Infinite Crisis, you really don't. Right. They tell you what you're supposed to read, but all the other stuff is in there for your enjoyment. And if you don't read it, it doesn't change the story. Well, for I mean, them you to can't say... really say that, though. Because, I mean, if you just read Infinite Crisis, you don't read OMAC. You don't read no. Villains United. No, but no, those they are, told you. Those are, those, those are build-ups, though. Those, those are build-ups, and they, and they told the you, but time. that's not the series. These are different parts of it as well. But the, but the Spider-Man miniseries was coming out during House of M. And for somebody, I, I oh, wait, well, let me say one more thing. Okay. For somebody to say to me previously in House of M, that was not previously in House of M. It just wasn't. You're not. I'm sorry. It wasn't. It was until you read issue three that you found out those facts. And I went because I did. I went. There's a human. It doesn't resistance. say previously in House of M. It just tells look at, the story. Look at the House of M. There's yeah. a big House of M right there. But it doesn't say previously in House of M. It just tells the story. Oh, so, so obviously they're talking so about previously we'll in, in Spider-Man in. miniseries. <laughs> I mean, you can you, It's not. It, it's. It's, I don't know. I didn't feel it's bad any. Story. It's I didn't bad either. Story I read though. the whole story and I didn't sit there and go like, "Oh, I gotta go read that now because I'm no. missing something." But I didn't know I what was like I got why. Right. I didn't get Spider-Man's 
his his life. Why was he so upset? I don't know. I didn't read those issues. Uh, is it because he, he was, was happy? Because he wasn't upset everyone until, was upset because after the fact. Because they said very early on that that Scarlet Witch did everything to make everybody as like their perfect world in their head. So of course he's going to be upset because he just had his perfect right. world. But to go back to what Kevin was him. saying about the taking the four m- middle issues and cutting it down to two. That's why I think those issues were stretched because if it's so important, yeah, if I, it's not as important, if you don't need to read them, then it should have been shrunk down. Those. I think the only. Why was it so? Because if you think about it, this miniseries only was one, two, seven, and eight. Yeah, that that that's. And those f- middle four issues should have been compacted. If it wasn't, if they didn't want you to feel for Spider-Man when he's pounding the, that table at the end and and eight. You know, then why didn't they include some of his stuff in the story? It was not in the story. You, my point is, you needed to read Spider-Man House of M miniseries to really get the effect. See, and the thing is, you get that you get that whole notion. You can have the whole argument. Do you, do you want to have a crossover where you have to read other things, or do you want to read just the crossover? So what they did was, they did the story, the main story in there, and I I don't feel you have to read those if you don't want to. All you have to know is the fact that his reality was changed in his mind, and for him he was happy in what he was experiencing, and now that just got ripped out from under him, and he's one of the few people out of the House of M that remembers what happened. Because, but we don't know what happened. Well, but all you got to know is the fact that he experienced what he experienced, and now he remembers it, whereas the majority of the people that experienced House of M don't remember it. So to them... They're not upset because they don't remember experiencing what they experienced. They don't remember uh, experiencing something that they, the way they would perceive their life, they want would want it to be. So to them, it's not that way. That's why he's one of the sole characters that this char- this storyline impacted because it really meant something to him because now he got to experience all that past aggression and and guilt and all that such. Where this is how his life, if he would chose to it, it for it to be. This is how he would have it to be. Which is an interesting, you know. So it would fast, motivate you uh, to, if you want to read it and find out more about it, then you read Spider-Man House. Which of M, means right? that you need to read it. Right? No, no, you don't no. Because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know that that crap was in the Spider-Man series. I never even would have guessed it was in the Spider-Man series because it says it all right here, and I don't know. I was totally satisfied okay, with that. Okay, maybe a better way that I should say it is comparing. If we're going to compare this. To Infinite Crisis, this felt like it had more holes in the miniseries itself than Infi- Infinite Crisis does. Infinite Crisis gives me little tidbits that are better explained about what goes on in other books than this does. I'm not saying you have to read the other tidbits of House of M. If you if you want to, you do. If you don't, you don't. But I'm saying that it's better explained in Infinite Crisis when they explain what's happening in when they went over that four-page thing of of OMAC and Day of Vengeance. It was explained better in those two pages spread than it was giving a panel here. So you may not need to read it. I'm just saying that Infinite Crisis did a better job of explaining it in their series. I I have to say, till really six, I'd say where people start waking up more and more. I really didn't. I didn't feel as though I had anything invested into. Even though growing up on Spider-Man, I really didn't care that he had a perfect life it wasn't until really he had that tragedy back that uh, that i felt as though i had something invested in a character that i could follow to the end of the story like, like this is the first time in a long time i could relate to spider-man again that there was something about that i was like you know what i can connect with that character so that i can almost experience some of the the tragedy that that he's starting to go through but up until that where everybody's happy living out their perfect i i really didn't care i I mean, I skimmed through those issues because it's not something I could latch on to. So just like, it, you know, and I don't want to compare it to Infinite Crisis, but I I have time invested in in, in Batman having read that and just seeing where that's going to go with his the, the friendship with Superman and Wonder Woman, how that I, – I feel as though I have something uh, invested in those characters right now in that series. But in this, until really six, I didn't feel as though I had anything invested in any of them. Uh, let me ask a question. Uh, the return of – if this is not an alternate universe story, then how did Hawkeye come back? Well, they never really said that he died. Well, that's what I'm what saying. So you can't – to me – Oh, no, he died. He died he big died. time. But – Was he alive in this eight? What, you mean in House yes, of Yes, because they, yeah. they, uh, they find the suit arrow, uh, to, arrow the to the wall. So you figure he gave up the suit because he was – 
upset that he died and she let him die. Although, you know, she loved, you know, he loved her, you know, oh, he felt see, strongly I didn't think for about her. That. I, felt, I thought, oh, there's just a suit so they can remember him by, but he's still dead. No, that's, that was like the alarm goes signal. off in Avengers Mansion. Yeah, because you see it? Captain America smile. And yeah, you see yeah cause he, so you know he's, he's back. But again, he didn't. Well, okay. You know, it's, it's, Let he me died pose in this that, then. In that reality. So, I mean, you know, it's. It's hard to define. Maybe, maybe when Scarlet Witch put everything back, she undid the couple horrible things that she did at the very end. What that, that's what I. That's what I took. You know, it I took she's his... restoring reality the way she wants to restore yeah, but it. She and... didn't kill him. He was killed by what was well. Now you don't know that. Whatever. Yeah, I know. I know. See, but I, it was all as a result magic. of what See, she did. And all that, me, all no... this wacky stuff. So yeah, I can't. To put me, there's no defined point. Like here, this issue started. So everything from this issue after is what she changed. This can go back to, you know, who knows? You know, it's... it's. Now, I am actually starting to see more of what Brian is saying. You know, the, the stories that you see, like the Captain America is told in flashback because it's in Captain America's mind, which I can see that. You know, I can see that maybe it wasn't... Maybe it is just memory-altering as opposed to reality-altering. Well, I, I, okay, I, I, I believe that she physically altered the surface of the Earth and, and people who are dead are alive. But, of course, to go along with that, she had to also tweak your brain you know obviously peter parker had to think that he'd been married to to gwen for you know 20 years or whatever and in reality this new reality started just yesterday so she was only alive for one day but he had to think she was alive for 20 years or whatever. which for me for that would actually fill in a huge hole that i had with you know i knew scarlet witch knew the marvel universe but how did she know you know to, to create uh, to bring back Gwen Stacy, to bring back Uncle Ben, to bring back... She didn't know Spider-Man that well, so she wouldn't but, have known well, to bring them back. But if you're saying that maybe you know, she, she recreated the, the, earth, the, the Earth, put the heroes that were at the, at the spot where she changed it on that Earth, and then let them in their mind create their perfect world... That might, that might, like I said, fill in a huge hole that I had with, you know, a huge problem I had with the story. See, how do you define if she truly changed the actual physical nature of the Earth or just changed everybody's subconscious mind and what they believed and what they perceived? Which then those, those uh, perceptions changed the Earth. Right. It's what they believed they saw. But but then but then then that brings there up the whole no thing spoon. of though would would those heroes allow Magneto to be the you know the, to be uh, would normal humans was she only affecting the superheroes was this a world you know was this a worldwide wish granting um, because who would be happy with Gwen Stacy but yet letting mutants and house and Magneto rule the world that's the only that's a question another question See, I, I kind of but that was her that was her reality and, on, and her happiness or even Magneto's happiness to to rule the well, world well think he, of behind it it's who yeah. was who yeah. was influencing her yeah it was, it was Qu- Quicksilver, Quicksilver which is you know both of Peter. them are children of Magneto so you know, he's looking at it as Magneto's my father, and he has more admiration for Magneto than Scarlet Witch has. Yeah. So him looking at it, then he would kind of want to influence it that way as well. So it's not so much her. He influenced what she yeah. was doing as well. Because and there that, still was a human resistance. There still was a resistance, which makes it somewhere the world's not perfect, obviously. because Well, it never changed. will be because everybody's perception is different. Now, see, I took it as... Avengers Chaos is, and, and again, it might be explained later, but I took it as Avengers Chaos is when she really started changing reality or losing grip and going forward. We only perceive it as a weak time, but when she actually changed reality to them, it was everything retconned back. We don't know that. I mean, they don't know that. Yeah, because they even question how far back her manipulations right. go. Right, exactly. And, That's and, what and I'm just, saying. There's no defined time. You can go but back as, and question anything. But just as far as the story goes, I do it from Avengers Chaos until Marvel explains it differently to me. But now I have a question about Gwen Stacy. I'm sorry, Matt. But I have a question about Peter's feeling bad about Gwen Stacy. I don't, I don't think he was upset when he got back. I don't think he was as upset about the fact that Gwen and Ben were alive as the fact that who he really came to love was Mary Jane now and be married to Mary Jane. And after all these years, he was mad that that was taken away from him too. The but fact in a that his world it wouldn't be Mary Jane, it would still be Gwen. Kind of, yeah. Years. Like 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 Well, ben. of course, but he's he's discussed that before in his books. I mean there's been many a short story or little plot lines where the, he's been still recording or writing letters to Gwen. And Mary Jane's been a, a 
privy to that. She's been involved with it or, you know, come across when he's doing it. And it's not an issue for them as a couple. She realizes that he still loves her. But, you know, she's not I, there. So I, I just mean, took it as, as he was so angry that, that – See, to me it's like – That he what, could easily slip back into that, I guess. See, I looked at it more as like here he got the two people he loved the most in his life back, and now they get ripped away from him again. That's more of an impact than him losing Mary Jane. Well, now the true test is if they follow through with a lot of these things. Oh, well, absolutely. That's, that's that, the true test. And I, of I'm apprehensive just as everybody else is. Um, but I, the biggest thing for me is, like Shane said, with the 198, I am, yeah. I am all I'm about all them for that. trimming down the mutant population and making them the and magic of And that means that X- now they can have a maximum of 198 X titles. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because each mutant will get his own individual right. miniseries. That's right. But I am very interested in how this plays out. I am very interested to read X books. I want to see who's around, who's not. I want to yeah. see how this all influences and what you know. So, you know, I have to look at it. There's a lot of things that I'm interested oh, in now, yeah. and and as long as they follow through with them, I, I I think it's great. But you could easily fumble the ball as well as you can easily accomplish yeah. your goal as well. Now, I, does, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Does everyone agree that whether you thought it was too long or not, that it was a cool story and it's an interesting time in the Marvel universe? And maybe you know, our thoughts about it beforehand were that it was going to be all rubbish, and now it's actually kind of cool. No, I never thought it was going to be a horrible story. I, and we're not talking about no, the, I don't the effects of, a, of as an event yet. But I don't think I never doubted it's that it was going to be an interesting story. I thought it was an interesting story. Um, there were some things I did have problems with it, um, but I don't. Uh, for me personally, um, it's it was a little bit. I, I thought there was going to be something a little more to it, but I, I don't know what that was supposed to be. You know, I'm not saying it needed to be longer by no stretch. Of the, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but it was an interesting story, and for me, it's all about like what we just talked about. It's about the follow through. You know, because this is a setup. This right. miniseries is a setup. Absolutely. It's not even an event. It's a setup. But um, I, I kind of did think it was going to be rubbish. I thought it was forced to compete with Infinite Crisis because there was no groundwork laid, because it was just thrown together. Just like we all felt Identity Disc was thrown in there to compete with uh, Identity, Identity Crisis. Crisis. Um, I was pleasantly surprised, and I'm thrilled that they're involving the X-Men in this capacity. I was very surprised that Magneto lost his powers. I was very surprised Iceman lost his powers because they actually took characters that I like and now they're just normal. And I like the the fact that they didn't just, like, die. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They lost their powers. They're still existing. you know what? That's... You know, all the years they've been fighting Magneto, and they've never killed him. And you, find, you just like I've always been saying, could somebody just kill him already? Like, get a new villain and kill this guy. Well, now you've taken away the villain, but you've left the character, so there's no no killing. But now they can move on to a different villain, and maybe Magneto can still be evil in a Lex Luthor kind of manner well, without right. having his powers. And so that makes it a little. Interesting. I mean, that's the thing about Magneto as a character is the fact that he's still probably going to do what he wants to do is right. where he wants. You know, the, the whole problem between Homo Superior and Homo Sapien, um, even though he doesn't have his powers, he still can be the mastermind with other mutants. It's exactly. just the fact that he was just such a powerful mutant and a force to be reckoned with, be, you know, besides. But What do you think th- about the ramifications with uh, Wolverine remembering everything? I think it's about damn time. Yeah. And I yeah. hope they follow yeah. through with it. And I hope they frankly, do well I'm with it. I'm tired of all the different origin stories and, and right. on Wolverine. And, and I think it's a, a cow they milked way too long. Well, and maybe if they set it up now, maybe they can finally do Origin 2 that they've been right. talking about for a long time. Right. Because you know, now that he remembers, maybe they'll spin that into this. But see, I would do the opposite of this. I would do that he remembers and is not coming. He's not given one ounce of information. Well, that, he might not tell everyone. But, but that's what I mean. That, that, yeah, they're not going to no, not even, all No, time. not even that. That all we know may not be true at all, which is a very real possibility. And the I, origin could be not his true yeah. origin. Well, what yeah. it does is it Well, they gives showed him, part of origin which I hope here, not. though, right? But still, you don't know if that's Scarlet, which is right. reality. Well, see, and my thing is, is that what was the coolest thing about Wolverine before they started all this, the, the origin stuff, is that you didn't know his origin. Well, guess what? Now we can also, once again, not know his origin. And that... And is, he knows it. And he knows it, but we don't. Exactly. That is more inter- interesting I agree as a character yeah. I agree than all of a sudden now we're going to get Origin 2. All the, I don't I just go back to the roots of what makes these characters so cool. And right. that was the big thing about Wolverine. You're right. Because I did. I got frustrated with it. I used to buy Wolverine and read it. And they always used to sit there and dangle that carrot in front of your face. And you're going to find out in these next couple issues, you know. And then it's like more questions and stuff added than there are answers. And then... 
you know, here comes issue 50. Now you're going to find out, you know, and it, it was just bull. Layer yeah, layer. it was just bull. Nothing, nothing was relevant anyway. You know, all that stuff you can just blow out the window. And keep, then they did Origin, which... I was going to say, keep Origin, but everything from Origin till now is in, now in question and keep it in question Origin until was a good they story. come out with Origin again. Origin was uh, a good story, and I thought it was interesting. I just, I'm just the biggest faux pas. I hate those freaking bone claws. I think that's the stupidest thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, the whole thing, he's always there. been set up. You always see pictures of the skeleton, and it's these claws that are with the devices attached to his muscles. Yep, his little tubes. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, you know, that was just a, a stupid, I'm hoping that's part of Wanda's perception, you know? That. You know what, I remember uh, John came up with a good idea that just uh, after all that time, you know, the the metal being there, once it was removed, that just part of his regeneration process, that the bone just kind of had to fill in that gap. And that's, he, he didn't always have the bone, but just because his body was so used to having those metal claws in there that those grooves were still in there, and to compensate, that's how why they created the, the bone claws. But then that doesn't make sense of origin nope. then, no. Yeah, no, no, but this was this origin. was this was way this was pre origin when they yeah, I when just, they had a, the, the weapon metal X removed. guys ripped out the bone and put in the metal. And then it That's all. No, I, I don't think it, too far uh, into uh, it. Uh, uh, but I anyway, go off I, this I, whole tangent, but yeah. yeah. Did, did anyone read the I think it's called The Secrets of House of M that special that they did? No, I didn't get um, it. Yet. That that irritate like they had a couple things. I know Moon Knight was in there and they talked about him, so I was like, all right, they're gonna have Moon Knight. You're gonna actually see Moon Knight besides Mark Spector, and you didn't see any of that. And yeah. yeah. There was a couple other things that were in there that gave you some background to what's going on to bring you up current. But uh, there were I don't know, it kind of was a left down. There were a few like I I loved Wolverine jump, jumping off the helicopter. Yeah. I thought that was yeah, a cool. That was yeah. great. You, but, you know, talk about huh. desperation, and and if anybody's going to survive it, it's going to be Wolverine. And talk about. What a cool – like when I saw that, I went, oh, man, that makes such an awesome movie image. Yeah. You know, so I, I did like that. Um, where's, uh, the, 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 I was a little confused of, of, the, of Xavier because whenever they remembered, they, they were – whenever they were – I guess when Layla Miller zapped them and they remembered, they saw Xavier – I guess there was the buildup of him being dead, and then in that one cliffhanger, you saw the the monument, the big stone, and and I I I I, I went, oh, I thought it, I thought it was a lie. I, that that I, maybe that was me, but seeing the flashes of Xavier, I thought that meant that he really was alive, and then you found out that he was dead. But I, I it confused me more than than anything. So I'm not. Which I think you might find that out in the uh, Deadly Genesis miniseries, which mm-hmm. is because again, that's part that's remembering this character that. You know that people kind of forgot about, and right? But so. wasn't wasn't it Cloak that went down under his grave and found that there was nothing under it, under that monument? Yeah, that he's yeah. not there, so he still could have been penned up somewhere, hidden. Right. I don't say he's dead. I'm just mm-hmm. saying yeah, that yeah. there's a character that you know has been forgotten about in the early, you know, new generation of X Men back in the '70s that had, the readers and everybody has forgotten about, and for some reason there's been some ramifications between him and Xavier, and now he's back because you know this whole the whole thing is cleared up now you know there's no more mucking around I, i'm kind of sick of the every so many years xavier disappears type of, i think they're rerunning that one too many times that's just like the death of magneto i mean at least, at least this is something semi-different uh, but yeah i, I kind of agree that, uh, xavier can walk no he can't he can walk now nah, his back's broken again <laughs> i was kind of getting tired of that one too I, I have a feeling we may not have read I know there was a build-up in Excalibur, and I did not read those, and I did not have those to read. So there may have been some glimpses of what happened to him there, although was was he in the first issue? Was he in the first issue? Yeah. Was he with one? No, that's right. He was with the Avengers. And they all started to disappear in a very confusing scene, but uh, they all started to disappear as they approached that's right. um, Wanda. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe he'll be powerless in somewhere. And See, they now, still can't find him as they return. Yeah, right. just just some bald guy sitting in uh, Egypt. Now, my only problem with this, with the next step is, you know, I don't want to buy all these random issues of the X titles to read the story. I really wish there would just be now a Decimation miniseries, just like the House of M miniseries now, that just, you know, it's like, because it, it, now it's too much. You know, yeah. now it's like, well, I, I, I'm really curious. I want to read the story. I bought this House of M the day after the first Decimation book. It was interesting uh, for the first time in a long time, a, a fascinating X-Men story. Which proves that a, one book can be done in the entire X-Universe. 
You know what I mean? You see yeah, how man? Yeah, see how? Yeah. Well, sure. You know, I mean that. I mean, I understand and why. And see, I think that's what they should do right now. I think so. Yeah, and I, I mean, do too. you know what? They'll they could sell me the same number of books, but just have it all as a mini series instead of and just put all the X books on hold because it gets very scattered to me. It's like even I, if I they did four four issues a month, like one a week for each of that would replace the missing X book. But it would just be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I know where I'm going. Get one writer to write it all so it's cohesive and not right. this. Because now I'm going to, okay, so the next issue is you know, X-Men. And then after that, Uncanny X-Men. But, you know, I'm going to read those two issues, and there's going to be a hole in between them. I'm going to pick up Uncanny, and it's not going to be the last page of X-Men. Right. I just, I guarantee you that's not going to be that way. And then you're going to go to New X-Men, it's going to be, again, the whole, like, where's the issue I'm missing? And that's right. what drives me nuts see and there's that argument again you know do you have to you know can instead of putting it all into just x-men they're putting out you know decimation they could make that a six issue miniseries or four issue miniseries whatever it is and like you said that'd be kind of interesting to do it once to one issue a week a month so that way if you don't put out uncanny or new x-men or whatever it is that those tell that story and then you can have the ramifications affect the books afterwards i think that's a smart idea because i don't want to buy every x title so to me, yeah. <laughs> that's what I would prefer. I, I totally agree with you. And uh, to me, afterwards, right now, you should just have Uncanny X Men, and that's it. You know. Right. Yep. Yeah. If they're the main, if they're book, cutting down the mutants. That's cut right. down the mutant titles instead of having. You know, now we have Generation M, Son of M, Deadly Genesis. I mean, I know they're miniseries or whatever, but New like, X Men. There's oh, Uncanny. M&M, there's X Men. Excalibur. Excalibur. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's there's just X Factor. You know, that's right. Good. Actors back. I, I have to say, something that irritates me to some extent with that is that right there tells me that this whole storyline just has to do with X Men. Even though they have the, the new Avengers listed there, they're just kind of like a. F- I understand the the you know mutants were cut down, but to me, then why throw the Avengers in there? B. If okay, go ahead. If it just seems to focus the ramifications right now that we're seeing just seem to focus on the X Men and X Tiles. Why not? also touch some of the Avenger titles as well. Because I think it will touch the Avenger yeah, titles because mainly because Brian Michael Bendis doesn't write any of the X titles. So they're going to put the decimation with the uh, of, uh, with the X titles. I think you'll see once this is done and I think once they're done with their current ninja storyline uh, I think you'll see the ramifications. I think he'll pick up on Peter Parker's sadness and his Maybe ability to cope. You might see an issue with that. You'll see, you'll probably see Hawkeye somewhere along the line down the road. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, I, I believe that's one of the reasons. Because, like I said, Bendis is writing it, so I think, and he's not one. That is one thing I will give him. He is not one to let go of threads he puts in books. And all I have to do is look at Alias and Pulse, and and see where he's weaved all of those Jessica Jones into everything where there wasn't Jessica Jones. Four, three or four years ago, and now she's integral in the Avengers books, and he's put her retro contour back into the history of those books in such a way that I don't mind it, and I love the Avengers. It's like and, she and never if, was with nothing. Yeah, it was. It was like she was never not there, and right. I, I love you know the the whole fact. You know, we've talked about this. Her relationship with Luke Cage, and he took that to the next level. You know, now she's going to have the baby and all this. So. Brian and, and and just Daredevil. I mean, his entire Daredevil run is one story built on another, built on another, built on another. Going back to that first storyline to pick things out, he, he will. And, and I, I have no doubt that that uh, he will not forget about this once it comes to Avengers. I just think they're spotlighting it right now because the, the whole mutant thing was so huge yeah. Yeah. that you're going to see that as a major ramification. That's going to be focused on right now. But you're going to see it trickle out into the other parts. Well, Hawkeye's in was solicited in, in the previews on the cover of She Hulk. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it's number two that's out on the stands tomorrow. Which seems I mean, very I mean, weird. Wednesday. That I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. I don't read that book, so I don't. It, know. it all depends on when in continuity it takes place. Because right. mm-hmm. with She Hulk, it could always well, take place. Well, then to me, it kind of goes back to something I believe Peter mentioned is that, or maybe it was Jamie, that if if that's the case, what you're telling me about what you know Brian Michael Bendis will do, then why not put all the stories on hold and say. You know, start up a new storyline. Why don't you just put everything hold it? This is what's going on in the entire universe. This is the House of M. The ramifications, they're going to happen now, not as soon as we finish up this current storyline. That, that's what loses me with this as opposed to Infinite Crisis where everything is tying in together. You know that that's going on now. 
as in House of M, it's kind of questionable. Does that happen before the storyline, after it? Yeah. Well, then you have those issues, like to go on what Jamie said about Hulk, where, and this is where Joe Casada's statement that you don't need to read all the tie-ins, or you don't need to read, you know, if you're enjoying these books, you don't need to read, uh, you know, other things kind of falls, because the House of M in Hulk, that story was four issues. So if you're a regular Hulk reader, you now have four issues of a House of M tie-in that if you're not reading House of M, why, you know, you're probably going, what the hell which, is this? Which I was. I was reading the Hulk I, because Peter David had come back to it. So I was reading it, and like I said, I picked up that first issue. I forced my way through that first issue. I, I'm the kind of guy, if I'm reading a comic book and I'm forcing myself to read it, I put it away because it's not worth my time. Forced myself to read it, and I picked up the second one, and again, I was sitting there going, I'm not enjoying myself. I forced, and unfortunately, buying them the way I bought them through the through a mail order, I'd already ordered all those issues. So now I'm stuck with four issues of the Hulk, which I will never read because I'm I'm just not going to force myself to read them. And it's you know where I could have they could have done House of M the Hulk like they did House of M Fantastic Four and House of M Iron Man Iron Man and oh, uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man and all those that they did and just let Peter David on the Hulk. Doing his storyline, it 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 really I agree with it. it kind of you know, I know me off. I look at uh, poor ha- poor Peter David. I mean, he gets back on it's, Hulk and he yeah. gets roped into House of M. He goes on Spider Man. He gets roped into the other. It's like you know, let the guy do his books. Now, now I will say with what Matt said about um, comparing it to Infinite Crisis in that way, I don't think Marvel did a bad thing because Joe Quesada has already said continuity in general is not as tighten it to him so to me i don't have a problem with the fact that they're going to finish this storyline in avengers because that's the way it is and then all of this stuff just happens after that so that that doesn't that doesn't bother me i did have to laugh though i I just got i just started reading i have about four months worth of thunderbolts saved up i started reading them and the first issue right after their thunderbolts it kind of like a character made the reference before we were interrupted this is what we were doing and it just made me laugh out loud that was like that was fabian's little dig at, uh-huh. at a house of m crossover but uh, one of the things that has nothing to do with anything we're talking about now but in issue eight they stuck that damn ad right in the middle of a double page spread of her white queen looking at the world yeah. and and you literally i almost you know I almost accidentally ripped it out because – not ripped it out, but, like, pulled it because I was like, oh, man. Um, it's like, you know, you're trying to see where in the world all the things are, and there's this damn ad in the middle of it. I was like, come on, what, you, Marvel, why would you do that? See right here. See, there's a whole big earth. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then you're like, wait, what? <laughs> wait a minute. You know, Australia's red, but the other – you know, I'm like, but where's that? I was like, what? That's like when they take those they uh, Bionicle or whatever, and they have those little yeah. two or three page comic that they yeah, shove right yeah, in the middle. Yeah, that yeah. pisses me off. Either put it at the end or don't put it in. And, and DC's guilty of that. They're doing it right now with that, that Batman, uh, that uh, Batman uh, VS game. Yeah, oh, right in the well, middle of everything. Here's like the it. thing that uh, while you're talking, I went to Marvel's website because I figured they'd have a checklist of the House of M books, and they do. But they don't tell you what order to read them in. They don't say, you know, part one, part two, part six. How am I supposed to know? Because, God damn you're, it, you're not. got to be a way to read it. It's not going to be a continuing story. That's the whole thing. It's, it's, this is just how decimation is affecting those different books. So you're not going to – I don't believe this was meant to be read in this way in any kind of order. Well, now, it's I know, just there. I know that – the only one is real, like X, the X Men issue. The X Men comes, comes right immediately out of after right. this. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, and then there's, uh, I mean, and they have the the Deadly Genesis, which is a mini series. Sure. I guess the Son of M is a mini series. Which, oh, I'm sorry. X X Factor is an ongoing series. New X Caliber is an ongoing series. Uh, and everything else, I think, you know. So I, I really don't believe those were meant to be read one, two, three, four, five. Right. And for well, those of you out be. there who are keeping track, this is my first reference to Infinite Crisis. So don't get all in a tizzy that I'm trying to compare it. But yeah, yeah, it was me, Shane, doing it. Before. Yeah, it was all Shane. Decimation is Marvel's DC countdown to Infinite Crisis. You can't fool me otherwise. It's completely the same thing because it has all the. It has Excalibur. It has New X. Yeah, they, has, they did that. Uh, yeah, and a Force of One. Yeah, and so which I don't mind. I liked that st- that story. I liked that. You know, da 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 da. But when you're talking, you know. When people are saying that, well, there's no comparison. I'm sorry, there is a comparison. So then what comes next? If this is the countdown. X-Men. 
the X Men story, just like JLA led huh? into Infinite Crisis. You just said Decimation one. is the count. Is the oh countdown. well, oh well, Decimation led into OMAC one, and I mean, <laughs> Countdown. Countdown led into OMAC one, and Decimation's leading into X Men. So I mean, but it's the very whole story similar. is called Decimation. What? I think I'm the confused. flag. The flag. It's like a. F- the f- the f- it's a. It's a start. It's a flag for it's the for the titles. It's right. not it's just like, like a storyline. I don't top understand that what, five when you say to... Decimation. What are you referring to? This this eighty page or whatever this is. Oh, this the is House, House of, of M, M the day, day after. after. Leading into the, that's the title of the book, House of M the day after. Yeah, but it's, but it's, it's one of the decimation right. crossover titles. Well, okay, so I called it the wrong thing. Oh, I was yeah. like decimation is. Oh, well, I, think I was all intrigued. I'm like, okay, decimation is the countdown to what? In so what comes though, after decimation? I'm all excited. You have this grand plan of what some huge event that's going to occur in Marvel, and I'm like, oh. In the previous, it's called wake up and go to sleep. House of M. It is called decimation. So do you think this House of M is more or less the identity crisis? Of type of no, I, would, I wouldn't compare. This it, is no. really, you really can't know. compare it. No, to yeah, I wouldn't get just too that this is going to lead you into comparison. a bigger event that's going to be another miniseries. That's going to type, yeah, type I mean, of thing. How Identity Crisis is kind of the stepping stone to Infinite Crisis, but you had a couple steps. Along I honestly the way. don't even no, believe it's, 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 Identity Crisis is a stepping stone to Infinite Crisis. It's just because it has the same. It, it kind of had a couple title, things mean, yeah. that went to there. I mean, they, they changed. That's where you started to see the universe change a little bit. They started bringing out some of the darker secrets. It, I really don't. I don't. Right. In my mind, put you know, infinite in, in identity crisis going right into infinite crisis. I believe identity crisis was just that an, an event, and it started a few things here and there, and then right. it started going you know downhill from there. Now, as far as the whole you know no more mutants thing, I almost wish they would have taken more of a chance. Now, this is a, this is obviously my own. This is me thinking about things they could have done, not what they did. But I would have liked to have seen Rogue without her powers. Finally, yeah, yeah. You know, I would have liked to have seen Cyclops who could now see. Now he becomes. Especially if they're going to get rid of Professor X, he becomes now more human and he becomes a leader. I think they could have taken even more chances than what they did. Yeah. Because personally, I don't care about Blob. I don't care about Jubilee. I don't care about uh, Iceman. I don't care about uh, uh, Mirage. Well, you really I, haven't seen it. I mean, you've just only seen those few that they've talked to. There could be more out there. And I, oh, I, I'm yeah, sure there are. I, I honestly, and since this is all spoiler, I don't give a rat's ass. I obviously, <laughs> I, I thought I had seen somewhere where Cyclops didn't have his powers. That there was something that he was dealing with in like a preview of a book in previews where it was saying Cyclops now dealing without his powers. So I thought something, because no, we really didn't, didn't you didn't see him testing his powers. He didn't, he didn't try to put off a blast. He didn't. See that, or so maybe I, her maybe her effect isn't over yet. Yeah, it could. You know, something could, could happen. Yeah, that's true. Could be. Now, yeah. I, my a question I kind of came up with because I always had a, uh, equated a lot of times X Men with the whole and and they they've done this before. They've said X Men with mutants as opposed to humans is a metaphor for gays as opposed to. Straight, and they had you know because he had the legacy virus, which only affected the mutants, AIDS, and all that kind of stuff. I'm just, and this was just in totally in my mind. I'm just wondering what message, if anybody was using this as a metaphor for gays and straights, they have to suddenly now there are no more. It's like they totally took away the gays. There are no more gays, or there are now only 198 gays in the in the entire universe. I'm just wondering if anybody else. Kind of got that vibe, or if it was just well, me that was something that be- I mean, I think originally the Stan Lee thing was more about. I mean, it was more about race. Yeah, it was race. Right? And, okay. But then, oh, it, okay. it, it, yeah. Oh, obviously, yeah. Then it became. You could about see that they kind of retconned it into what was, yeah. you know, the you know as and time they, progressed. They did touch upon that in 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 that one shot with the uh, religious evangelist who mm-hmm. you know said. You yeah, know, and I, I, I thought and, that too. That was that was kind of interesting. Yeah, which you know, it almost makes it more. It goes beyond just them being different. Now, like they were talking about, it goes to them almost being it's extinct. extinct. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I, I had a question down here about, you know, why is the government going after them if they just got rid of millions of millions? Of, let them they the hell alone. It they want to wipe them out. But then now that you met, say that, that's what I, yeah. yeah. Which it is a little, little, little it's an evil Dick Cheney sitting you know? there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to answer your question, Jamie, I never thought about it as being gay and no, straight thing. I, mean, I never really, occurred I, to me. I, I always, I never always in the history of me reading X-Men had that concept ever uh, I mean, legacy either. virus well the legacy yeah, the virus, virus is the only time that i yeah i mean i always looked I at it as a race issue i read when i was reading about that i it just never entered my mind well, you're also the one who doesn't think uh lucy in the sky with diamonds is a drug song so 
Well, yeah. I have John Lennon on record in an interview. It says it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, right. So LSD, come on. <laughs> All right, that's a tangent. Go. Yes, but anyway. <laughs> but no, that's. I, I was just reading this. It just suddenly struck me that this was maybe not Marvel's way of getting rid of gays, but I just. It's just, it's just there. It's in, in in my brain, and I just threw it out there. So this is called reading anybody, too deep. Anybody, <laughs> deep. No, anybody starts to thread on the on the board. It was. I was mine. trying to think uh, the last scene of the Scarlet Witch where she almost looked like Little Red Riding Hood with the hood up, if that was kind of a metaphor for something, that is she naive or uh, to me that it, just the way it, she had the basket that it just mirrored the Little Red Riding Hood and I was trying to read a certain angle into that. But well, I it's kind of like where, how she grew up. I was going to say, know. that's exactly, she's going back to her childhood right. in the and hills of, the, as a gypsy in the hills of right. wherever. I kind of think she Indian. also changed herself. In that, that she doesn't have her power anymore. Well, then, and she's also living out her her fantasy, right? But now knowing that she can't do any of that, yeah, she's turned I, herself off. Yeah. Basically. See, that's the thing with with Scarlet Witch; they never truly could put parameters on her powers. So, I mean, that's that's kind of interesting that you know the way Bendis handled it and using her as that way because you can't question it because it's never been defined. Well, I didn't like when when in Chaos where he said, "There's no Doctor Strange said there's no such thing as chaos magic." Especially because Busiek went so far into trying to explain her powers. That that kind of... I went... But see, her powers uh, were never explained as chaos magic. It was always... Sure they were. A hex power. Yeah, but then she learned... Which probabilities. manipulates probabilities and... Ah, and right, but then her whole, the whole Busiek thing was, was chaos magic. I mean, she learned chaos magic. Or her magic was tapped into chaos. I mean, yes, yes, her mutant ability is hex. Right. But her magic ability, which is not... Her, what then she developed with Agatha but remember, or Harkness and all that. Remember your Jurassic Park chaos is actually yeah. order. So her power all comes from order. <laughs> see? So that's why it's not chaos power. You know. I mean, and it's something that's always, you know, because you think even back way back in the yesterday quest, the whole, I, I forget who wrote it, but when Byrne drew it, when she went cuckoo the first time, you know, it was all wrapped into Cthon and, and, and dimensional. Uh, yeah, that and he is the embodiment of of chaos and all that stuff. So I, it, and it's not. I don't. I mean, it's not like I'm beating down his door for it, you know. But I thought it was a. I thought it was less a story device built on continuity and more that he needed that to be that way for his story, which is fine. I mean, the story, you know, it worked. But I was kind of a little. I was like, mm. you know. But that's you know, like I said, it's not not major major. But what what do you think of the final image? What does everybody think of that final image, that little what energy cloud yeah. in, in issue eight? Where Hank Pym is talking about, you know, you can't get rid of all this energy without it going somewhere. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Energy does not destroy. He's not a mutant, though, right? Oh, no. Well, that's just kind of... I think they're just, just brothers and sisters. I think they're going, we don't really know what we're going to do with oh, that oh, yet, sure. but we're going to set it up yeah. so later on we can do whatever the hell we want <laughs> right. to. I don't think so. I think they have an idea of what they're doing with it. I well, don't that'll think be I, the crossover after Decimation. I just kept looking at it and it looked like it was almost, to me, looked like the world was being eaten away. Yeah. And you know, was slowly disappearing. So I, was I think it's the shadow this. of ego is coming in, <laughs> and he's going to take over. I thought ego or Galactus. I mean, it's it's a it's a great you know story left over that if they ever want to reverse the whole thing, all they got to do is like, hey, there's an energy cloud up there, and zoop, it goes back right back. Because you know, three with X Men three coming out and X Man uh, Ice Man being in that, I think there's no way they're going to let Ice Man be powerless for another year or two. So I mean, I, it could be just a device that they'll just let it. And maybe it'll become the ultimate mutant or something. <laughs> it's ultimate savior. Maybe, you know. Don't say ultimate X savior. <laughs> I did like how everybody was worried about Wolverine for a split second because uh -huh. if he had no healing power, the adamantium would kill him. That, yeah. that was, I just kind of thought that was neat. And the full page of him saying, I remember, was, yeah. Yeah, was a good moment. Yeah, it was yeah. very Did nice. you see Colossus armor up in this issue at all? He doesn't, like I, yeah, he doesn't like I, was, I was going through and I'm thinking he does in that. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember. I also, was going, in X Men, he does too. So. I was going through all of um, all the main X Men because we said how we would. I, I would like to see. Okay, there it is. I would like to see more original X Men or, or more beloved X Men lose their powers. That's what I want. And I was like, okay, well, all those X Men that are inside the room talking about what to do. They're kind of just about everybody there that, that you would normally see. And it would have been nice to take away, but then I was trying to think of who did I see use their power already. Because, like, for me, they could have done some cool stuff. Uh, you they know, could like have you done said, Beast. Like, everybody hates Beast's appearance, yeah, so why don't you yeah, make him human? I, I would have loved to see uh, him go back to I was the... talking to Murd 
uh, Adam. Last time I was around. Yeah, yeah, Adam. His nickname's Murd. And uh, just about how, you know, like Angel has gone from to Archangel, but now he's back completely. Uh, like, why, and there's some other characters as well. Why didn't they ever do that with Beast rather than keep mutating him stupider and stupider? You know, almost back to human that after all these years he couldn't find a cure for himself or you know, something yeah. different. I mean, especially like, you know, people say about the lead up to Infinite Crisis that they're against Keith Giffen's JLA. You know, this. Everybody's like, well, I hope they wipe out everything Morrison, which they're doing with, like, the X uh, buildings. They destroyed them, you know, and there's not as many mutants, which was never Morrison's fault in the first place. So why not take get rid of Beast? Well, and, you know, and wasn't the one storyline he actually wanted to get rid of his power? Yeah, was his, and his Joss friend. Whedon's, sure. Yeah, and Josh mm-hmm. Whedon's Astonishing X-Men. Yeah. Well, so I, I mean, think... that would have been great, because then he would have gotten it, and I think he would have been, then, you know, make him be upset about it. And now. then... What, well, if his, him in, being what if his intellect also went too? Who's to say that wasn't part of the mutant, you know, as well? It would almost been interesting to see if he did do it and he still retained his intellect and had well, him be like yeah. Oh, yeah. the Professor yeah. Xavier. Yeah. You know, that would be cool. Uh, but I, I kind of like your idea too with Cyclops. That would be interesting. It would be an interesting twist. Well, yeah, and they could do plenty of other stuff where, okay, somebody lost their powers and they're not a mutant, but they could get powers again like the way that Spider-Man or the Hulk got powers. You know, through science they could – they could mutate them on purpose, you know, because they could they could mutant, go through right. a year of not being a hero and you know and getting everybody's coffee and going, damn it, I went back on the team, and so then Forge says, all right, I can do some cool things, and blammo, you're a, you know you, you have a new power. Blob? He's so cool, Blob. Come on. I thought that was a great scene. Though. So, uh, it was a great yeah, scene, right. but it was like, oh, well, actually, didn't they never did actually said if their powers are gone that it could just be in like a remission type of thing. oh no they did no I thought they, oh, they said, no, they they said the gene genome out. Gone. yeah the gene yeah. the whole gene doesn't exist anymore right and did anybody ever what 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 is Blob's power I always just thought he was just really fat and could control that fat to be you know, the, the, the impervious it's a den- density but also he has like a gravity power you're my density <laughs> yes and that's <laughs> dense destiny and, and that's he has they explain his powers that he can control the gravity mm-hmm. around him that okay. way when he can plant himself it's like he he can hold himself to the earth as to try to move him is, is almost impossible well that's why I thought but then why did he lose all this fat that's I, was, I read down like why because it might he... be just like a, 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 a side effect a side effect yeah, from okay. having the gene it's just the way the, the power kind of mutates in his body and that's how his body adapted to the gene that's what I took it as they just needed a visual to show that yeah. that's what they came yeah, up with and I, it, was a, it was a powerful visual but when I looked at it I was like but that's not what his, his power was. Plus, he was really fat. His plus, when he was... came out, I'm, that's not what they had in mind. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He was just this huge blob. Yeah. Yeah, you know? see, that's, but that's they've, what... they've built on that. So. But I, th- I thought it would be more interesting just the fact that rather than him losing all his fat, he would just be, boom, he was right there. He was too fat to move. He would just right. be you know, kind of a, a blob, literally a blob. Right. Subway just... diet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What about this as an event? Are we going to discuss, start discussing that? Which we did a uh, little bit here and there. Um, I, I think it was overhyped for... The previous text I, I was definitely off was the mark when it came to this series, that's for sure. And I don't understand the big... Like, with issue, was it last page of three with the Hawkeye thing? To me, Hawkeye was never that important of a character that... You know, I understand if it would have been like a Reed Richards or even a Tony Stark type of thing where... Someone that had, to me has some kind of an impact that they were dead. Now all of a sudden, well, that was the issue. I was supposed to supposed to break the internet. Yeah, and to me, hearing that and then reading it with that huge letdown, to me that really defined how much of over um, Hype. overhyped it was. Well, uh, that's why I said that I think the House of M storyline would have been perfect to just be in the series because it was a, a, just a cool story. That set up a big thing. Now, the whole killing of all the mutants, that's huge for the Marvel Universe. The one week of alternate timeline, that's, that's, that's small potatoes compared to all the crap that's happened in the Marvel Universe in the past. So that's just a regular thing, and that's why I think it should have been reversed. House of M, in the series, the whole decimation, miniseries, event, big deal. You know, like they, they flip-flopped, they did it the wrong way. I'll go along with that. Yeah. Well, well, who's to know it wasn't? That wasn't the way it was going to be. And then all of a sudden, DC hit 
with Infinite, Infinite Crisis. Crisis. They said, well, we can't just put these in the books. We'll make a big deal out of them, and that's the way they went with it. Well, it could be. But, I, okay, well, then fine. Leave this as a miniseries, but still do House of M as a numbered miniseries so I can know what the hell comes first and what, how what order it's in. You mean Decimation. 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 I, knew, I knew what you yeah. meant. One mini, the, one, the one tie-in that I think you do need to read is the Pulse one with Hawkeye. Because he disappears in this miniseries and then returns, and I was like, not that it's pivotal, but I, I was like, for, I almost forgot that he left, but he comes back in the in, in the whole fight scene in Seven, and um, there's a little confusion of, he said, in the Pulse miniseries, he says Layla Miller woke him up, but when he leaves House of M, he's not woken up yet, so I didn't know when that happened, but I, I felt that was the one that I enjoyed the most out of all those times was that pulse did we find that thing. issue amongst oh, us oh it's yeah, in my okay. yeah now do you think that that little girl will become some major player in the marvel universe well, she was supposed to be in this one <laughs> yeah. which she is but you know i guess but they... i mean like do you, she, will she become the next x23 oh, yeah. god i hope it'll not. probably yeah. be the groundwork for the next mini series that's going to come out next year that this is just a stepping stone for <laughs> yeah well because didn't they allude that scarlet which created her right she, yeah. she wasn't already in the Marvel Universe before. No, no, she was, that was, I guess, almost her key to getting everybody back. And now she's there with the parent, waking her up for school. I mean, now she's there. But do they, does she have the powers? Is she influential? You know, or is she just Layla Miller? Yeah. Because they said she was more than a mutant. She's not a mutant. She's something different, new. Maybe she's like the next evolution. She's a Homo super superior. Uh, Oh, Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, an, it, it, you know, regardless of what Joe Quesada wants to say, it is a miniseries that spawns another miniseries that's spawning tie-ins. It's, it's an event. It's something that's a line-wide event with, like, you know, the page, just the page on the end of that one shot alone with all the new things. I mean, there's no fool in anybody, Joey Q, sorry. No matter how you try to spin it. Well, and I think it should have ramifications in all Marvel titles. I mean, if all the mutants in the world are dead, then that, that should at least be mentioned. Well, they're not dead. They're just well, powerless. Well, just gone. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean. Just and depending on what they were doing. They, wow. they should, that should at least be mentioned in each title. You know, like somebody should at least walk past a newsstand and see. Well, what does that you know, do to Franklin only Richards? Only 198. Well, I was, was going to say, what does that do to, to all of the FF? Because wouldn't they have had to have something in their body that allowed them to well, mutate I, when they you went know, through I've the I've had this race? argument before. Yeah. Is they don't have the mutant gene. Mm, right. Their genes have mutated. Right. right. So, so that's why Spider-Man's not a mutant, even though he's a mutant. You know, <laughs> Because he wasn't Spawn. You know, a mutant is spawned by is parents. Spawn a, uh, a mutant? mutant is born. I know. <laughs> so when you're born by parents and you no, no, no have I a understand. Gene. I understand the difference. Technically, he's a mutant. If you have mutated, you are now a mutant. But he doesn't have the mutant gene. His genes are mutated. I just wondered if if so. the mutant gene was there and just dormant. It just didn't wake up in, in the Fantastic Four or Spider Man no, until they had a don't pull catalyst. a meta human type of thing like uh, yeah, Hulk. that's that's definitely Green Arrow was a meta human. Yeah. That's why he's always able. to... Yeah. But I wonder, you know, there would have been something interesting. Franklin Richards technically was supposed to be the most powerful mutant. You know, it would, Which would have been neat to see him kind of. He really is, and yeah. when you think about it, but you, they never really been tapped into that well, so you don't know. Well, he was conveniently tucked into the negative zone while because <laughs> uh, they went out to the movies, and so they put him in the negative zone as a you know for babysitting or something, and so then either he, that or he's that powerful, he could have rejected prevented himself from even being involved in it. Sure, I mean, yeah, he might have thought and go, "Whoa, what was that?" Yeah, pick up. Which would be kind of interesting, you know, to see his perspective, you know, to see what he would do. But, well, uh, there you go. Are we done? All in all, an interesting story that has some cool ramifications. And if Marvel does it it the right way, it could be cool and it could be... They have, they have, they're could, stepping in the right now, direction. now, we could be talking about, remember when that decimation yeah. thing happened? Wow, that was cool. And it changed the Marvel Universe forever, and they didn't go it, back on everything, all the changes they made. That's I what mean, I hope. I hope they keep it this way. Now, moving. certainly, new mutants will be born every day again, because yeah. that gene exists. And okay, yeah, so eventually we'll have more mutants. But I just hope they don't suddenly reverse everything two years from now, because right. that would suck. And see, it's it's that whole premise of... You gotta shake things up every so often, and if you're gonna do it, do it. You're gonna do it. Right. You're gonna make the commitment and do it. You know, after hearing what Mark Wolfman did with Crisis on Infinite Earths, I'm actually kind of disappointed because 
I think they had a perfect opportunity to do what he wanted to do, which was as soon as Infinite Crisis on Infinite Earth was over, everything started out number one, boom, here it is. You know, And I think that would have been so cool, and I would be so much more motivated to be involved with that. Um, to hear that now is kind of like... Ugh. And that's why they learned their lesson, their lesson. And, and they're doing one year later because technically that is a... Uh, a jumping point for every single title that they have, and that, so obviously somebody said, "You know what, Marv Wolfman was right." Right, exactly. He was right, and same thing with this. I feel if you're going to do this and you're going to shake it up, then make it happen and make it stick. You know, I'm not saying you have to relaunch every book, but with this story, it's not that necessary. I'm just saying that with Infinite uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, I would have loved to have seen that now, knowing that. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but um, just that, relaunch that, uh, all the X titles. Well, that's basically Just that's relaunch one X title. That's it. Yeah, because I don't know which one to pick up. I, I, well, bring, first of all, bring I'm back not Extreme up. X-Men. <laughs> no, I like that one. Um, I'm not picking up the X titles because of this because I just don't it's, it's I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to go buy the one that comes immediately after the special just just to kind of get a feel week. for yeah, what sure, happened yeah. with that with the sentence right. and stuff. it came oh, out last week no I know it did and okay. the guy told me that it was there and I was like nah I'm not going to get it and then I read this and went I gotta go <laughs> get, get it, it. Yeah. I got Actually, that and Excalibur but I didn't read either I want to pick up that new Excalibur issue because yeah. you know with Dazzler in it and stuff and I always want to love Excalibur Actually from this I'm going to go in on Wednesday I'm going to put pick up Excalibur I've already ordered X Factor because of Peter David, love, I you know, love Peter David, so I'm looking forward to reading that book. Plus, you know, I, I love the characters, and um, I'm gonna take a second look at uh, Deadly Genesis too. Just yeah, to, I want to read oh, Deadly that's Genesis. Ed Brubaker, right? Yeah, Ed so, Brubaker, yeah. Trevor Harrison. So I want to read that. I'm curious to see what they do with Wolverine, and I'd like to see if they, what they do with. It's a shame because it seems to be the more focus as far as the core X-Men bo- book is X-Men. Well, everybody and buy one, be... and we'll pass them around. There you go. <laughs> I don't want to – I'm not buying well, all this. To me, it's two, like – three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, uh, uh, ten, because everybody's going to read the 198. And we only have six of us here, so what do we buy? You know, to me, well, like – Well, he bought Excalibur. I bought Excalibur, X-Men, and Deadly Genesis. See, I was going to wait on Deadly Genesis because it's a miniseries, so I'll get the trade. But I want to read it now. I want to read Stay it now, too. Of. I know. Well, when you're done, let me know. I want to read it. But And you, you picked up the X-Men that follows this. I think so. I think I did, yeah. I picked up three X bo- picked up three X-Books last week. And next week is that Son of M? Or, or no. De- what's this one over here? Genera- Generation, Generation M. M. I guess it's, it's kind of like Generation X. And if I didn't, I'll be going Wednesday to pick it up. <laughs> it, it's kind of interesting how the Son of M is... Uh, you know, Quicksilver's kind of down and out while his sisters, you know, they're kind living of... Living the high life. Well, not a, was, she's living the life she wants, yeah. and uh, he seems to be a bum. I wonder if he's powerless. What's the matter? Yeah. No, I just had some feedback in my ear. I was just kind of curious. I was back talking. <laughs> <laughs> my only question, you know, that I, I look at as far as the House Amendment and everything going on is as powerful as the century is. He's vacant from this whole thing. Yeah. You know, why would he not even be clued in or keyed into this at all? He was watching he was, a movie. He was still hiding in his cave. In the watchtower. But Clock would have, you know, made him know to it, you know, and told him about it. So this is before the Century story arc? I don't know. It, it, I can't believe, like he said, that he, yeah. like Kevin said, that he wouldn't have been one of the ex, one of the Avengers going along with them to... Because I think that would be an interesting thing to throw in there, the fact that, you know... Because the same thing happened to him, basically. Right, exactly. So this is like a whole other, you know, step in that direction. And I think if you're going to take it from where the new Avengers story arc with him finalized, mm-hmm. with him going back to the Watchtower, and which leads into his miniseries, mm-hmm. at, at that point, he would have to be part of this. Yeah. Up until that, I could see them describing that's how he get out of it. Mm-hmm. But after that new Avengers arc, there's no way... That he would not be privy to something of this and have some sort of impact, and that would be a cool impact on the storyline to have him. Maybe you're not know, saying that he's totally uh, oblivious or totally uh, unaffected by it, but that it'd be kind of like maybe shifting in and out, shifting in and out, you know, and have something yeah. to that line or but, something. But, but maybe but, if you think about it, his ideal, his ideal life would have been just to be living with his wife, yeah, and it would have been like a cap where he never would have been. Century. Who he was, he never would have been Sentry, so that they could explain it away that uh, explain yeah. it away that way. That's too. the only way I can see it is that the fact that this started and this whole thing taking place before the 
or while the, mm. the new Avengers arc with him in it was taking place. So yeah. until, you know, this was already going on at that time, so I can that's the only way I can explain it away. But it'd be interesting to see what they do with him coming back in New Avengers in like issue 17 or so to see what his perspective is on this yeah. as well. Funny thing is, is on the old forum, we actually tried to come up with 198 mutants. And I think we got to like almost like 100 and early 100s. I thought you were up to 160s or something. Were we that far? I thought I saw that. I thought we were up to like only like 110 maybe or something like that. Mm. So they don't got many more to (laughs) to introduce, that's for sure. Well, there's some we can take off because they're powerless now. But we'll have to recreate that thread again to see if we can try to come up with existing you know 198 that are already existing and see if they have wiggle room to even create more be interesting i'm sure they do they'll somehow or another yeah, get more some, mutants yeah because but, we haven't seen all of them so some of them could but be in a way that's them. what i've been asking for for a long time is give me some new characters so okay you don't have Iceman, so you got to come up with somebody else to take his place and so Pull some other mutant out of the woodwork Doesn't that we never saw before. Doesn't have to be another ice character, but it'd be something right. different. Get creative. You Come know? frosty. Where's Firestar <laughs> during all this? See, yeah, I like Firestar. it the fact that they, uh, and that's how I looked at it, which they were looking at it like, okay, you trimmed the mutant population down. See, and I like to look at it as like, they are almost extinct. So, oh yeah. You know, so I mean, that's a little bit more, when you put it that way, it's a little bit more intense. So they're going to be shagging like rabbits now. You bet. So I mean, <laughs> you know, but that'll be, that'll be interesting to do, and that's going to be a process. Come it's here, like, Emma. That's right. <laughs> White queen popping them out. <laughs> so it's not like you're going to get new mutants next month, but eventually you'll probably, you know, they'll probably introduce. And But I mean, it's going to be a process, and that would make it, uh, you know, something worthwhile, rather than just all of a sudden you got 28 more mutants here this, right. you know, in the next year or something, but... What's Claremont? What's Claremont going to do? He loves to introduce new mutant teams. You oh know, God! Please the no. Neo and the, no. all the other ones. He's going to no. have to. Somebody's going to have to rein his ass. No. In. <laughs> please not. That's actually what I was kind of surprised about this house that event. they let him write it. Write well, it. they let him write it, and it was written actually so well. I, I've yeah, it was coherent. Of, yeah. And yeah, there weren't any missing it pieces. You know. It's kind of like not what you expect. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I saw Claremont. I was like, <laughs> oh days. my God. Oh no. But yeah. it was. It was. I thought it was well written. I would have enjoyed. The artwork is a little... Yeah, so, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's your episode. There's House of M. So choke on it, you bastards. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, are you <laughs> kidding? It's all going to start up again. Oh, I know. You know that, yeah. Pick apart everything. Everything we there. talked about. And... You see, but Pete is a DC guy, record, so he didn't like it. For the record, you can leave me out of it because I liked it. <laughs> yeah, but you're the Marvel like, oh, zombie, but you're the one so... that want, didn't want the miniseries. You wanted it to... You're the Marvel No, but I like the story. Right. Oh, I didn't say the story was are we horrible. Giving, are we giving it freaking swears? No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that's why I did it. All right. Later, guys. Bye. Bye. See ya.